This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. After people are recruited on their first day or very shortly thereafter, they may be given a, an induction training. An induction training, you will introduce them to their colleagues, uh, show them how to log on to the IT system, show them how to use a telephone system, show them where the, the fire exits are, the photocopier is, and so on, at the very minimum. In some other organizations, they might be sent off for a two-week course. The idea of induction training is to get people up and running, productive as soon as possible. Subsequently, during their career, they're likely to be sent on other training or development courses uh, to keep them up to date or to prepare them maybe for a future role. This chapter looks primarily at how people learn. And the first idea is uh, two different approaches to understanding learning, the behaviorist uh, psychological approach and the cognitive approach. The behavioral approach is essentially one which relies on reward and punishment. So if you were late for work over and over again, then the way you would be taught not to be late for work is they begin and perhaps uh, reducing your salary, uh, you know, re remove an hour's pay for every five minutes you're late. That will encourage you, obviously, to come on time. If you behave in a very good way, if you uh, win new customers and so on, then you might be rewarded there by bonuses. The cognitive approach uh, seeks, however, to get people to understand for example, why late coming is bad. You would explain to people that being late inconveniences colleagues, customers can't get in touch with you, it's hurting the reputation of the company, and long term this is not a good thing, you really ought to come in on time. Uh, it's not primarily using rewards and punishment, it is trying to get people to actually understand uh, why a certain method of behavior is important. The behaviorist doesn't really care whether you understand it or not. It's much more just interested in you doing it. Honey and Mumford. Honey and Mumford uh, identified four learning types, uh, uh, which is really relevant if you have a group of people and you're trying to teach, say, 40 people how to do something. It's important to realize that not everyone learns in the same way. So there are four types. First of all, you have a theorist. And the theorist likes to know all the theories before they begin working. So if we're dealing, let's say, with IKEA flat pack furniture, uh, you, you buy a chest of drawers or something, the theorist would open it up, get out the instructions, count out all the, the pieces and so on, make sure they're all there, then follow the instructions to the letter. The activist is very much the reverse of this. The activist would open a packet, almost throw the instructions away, and want to get, want to get on with it. The activist might uh, get a deeper form of learning because maybe they understand better why things are done in such a way, uh, but they're liable to get things a little bit wrong, and certainly with IKEA furniture, to be left with about half a dozen spare parts uh, that they haven't managed to put anywhere. In terms of, uh, say, learning software, learning uh, Excel, the theorist would, would want the book to read first, the activist would get in there and start moving stuff around in the spreadsheet, trying different formula and so on, maybe turning to the instructions when they got stuck. Reflectors are, are, are people who observe and consider if you're giving them a course. They are unlikely maybe to interact very much, but they would be thinking, uh, thinking, why is it done like that? Are there alternative methods of getting to the same result and so on? And they would, you know, can really consider, think deeply about what's going on. And finally, there are pragmatists. Pragmatists are motivated if what you are teaching them will enable them to do their job better or more easily. They're not really interested in learning for learning's sake. They're interested in 
what can this learning exercise do for me and my life? It means if you're giving a, a course to 40 people, um, you're likely to have people from each of these four categories. Uh, what you might want to do is to present people with a variety of learning methods. Mix it up a little bit. A little bit of theory, a little bit of uh, hands-on, then a little bit of emphasising how this will enable you to produce your budget much more easily uh, and that would kind of grab the, the attention of the pragmatist. Second theory is that of Kolb and, and what he called experiential learning. So Kolb says that we learn little by little and by experience. So let's say our experience was that we pitched to a client and we didn't win the contract. Nasty experience. So what we do is we go away and we we think about it. We reflect. Oops. We reflect on that. We think, why didn't we win the contract? Was it that our prices were too high? Uh, was it that maybe the presentation went on too long? Uh, was it that maybe the presentation was only given by one person and all the other people who give presentations maybe had two or three people presenting to, to, to display a range of a talent within the organisation. So you come up with a theory as to why something didn't work. And let's say uh, it is that you think the price is OK, uh, but maybe it was that you presented for half an hour all on your own and just the audience got a bit switched off uh, by it. The audience would have been more impressed if they'd seen two or three people presenting to get a better feel for the organization. Then what you do, the next contract that you are pitching for, you put in two or three people and you see what's happened then. And if you win the contract, uh, you are liable to say, well, I've learned something from how to uh, go in for presentations, how to get work. I should always give a you know, a variety of speakers and so on. If you don't win the contract, then you kind of go back and say, hmm, I tried that change, and uh, something else is wrong, maybe the price is wrong, maybe we're using the wrong visual effects. So the idea is you kind of go round and round that here, hopefully gradually improving uh, until the experience is one which perhaps cannot be perfected. Bit of terminology, uh, training, uh, it's uh, for competences, it's very specific, it's needed for the current role. So induction training, you need it kind of now. You'll be given training on Excel. You'll be given training on how to work the accounting system, because that's what you're going to be doing next week. And it's very, very focused on current, really practical competences. When you talk about development, this is longer term. Development is usually couched in terms of not something which you need to master now, but something which it's worth kind of having up your sleeve for the future. So uh, the chances are that if your career progresses at some point, you're going to have to make uh, presentations to groups of people. So it might be worthwhile if you went on a, on a public speaking course. Uh, or you might have to, at some point in the future, interview candidates for jobs. Uh, it's not immediately needed in the next few weeks, but it's likely that you're going to have to recruit people. And therefore, it might be worthwhile well in advance to send you on a, an interviewing uh, course. So again, you're equipped for this kind of growth, if you like, uh, that you hope to uh, enjoy in your career. Education, that's a knowledge acquired gradually through learning and instruction. Uh, education, maybe not talked about quite so much in a, uh, in a commercial context as training and development. How do we go about it? Well, training can be very expensive. Uh, trainers are very expensive. And, and if people are out of the workplace for a number of days, uh, very quickly, the, 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 the just their salary cost mounts up. So what we need to do is to carefully identify where training is needed. 
horny development is needed. Uh, don't go for a kind of, you know, spread it thinly approach. Try to say, well, you need that sort of training development. You need that. You need that. Uh, and make sure it is properly targeted. You set a budget. Uh, and then living within the budget, you decide on the method. It might be that you send people away on a formal course, on a residential course even, where they are not going to be disturbed by day-to-day -day workplace phone calls and so on. That's liable to be quite expensive. You might deliver it by a formal course in your premises, but make it clear that people can't be dragged out of the, uh, the training event uh, to, to deal with some sort of phone call. Uh, you might do it by coaching. Uh, coaching is, is really where the more junior person watches and accompanies the more senior person and learns basically on the job. It can be done nowadays by computer-based training, sometimes called just-in-time training, where you need to know how to work a bit of software, you bring up the help screen or some sort of little tutorial, and you get the training as and when you need it. The trouble with some of the formal methods of training uh, is that you don't necessarily get the training when you need it. It may be some months before you actually have to apply those lessons and you've forgotten it. So the method and, and then you deliver it. And what you must do then is some sort of assessment as to how successful the training was. Remember we've, we've said it is expensive it's also expensive if you get it wrong because you've spent the money on the training and the person is no better and they still can't do their job. You, you've wasted time. And it's very important to try to measure the results, to, to do a kind of an assessment. If people have improved, it could be asking their manager, do they seem more confident? Are, are they more skilled at working Excel and so on? And if you keep getting answers back, no, they seem as bad as ever then the training has obviously not been effective and you've wasted your money.